Okay, so today we're going to take a look at Oracle's Java Fundamentals 3.6. We will see that this is a unit covering defining methods. So the objectives for this lesson will be to describe effective placement of methods in a super or subclass, simplify programming by creating and calling defined methods, and handling collisions. We will handle collisions by creating our own methods. Efficient placement of methods. At times, many lines of code are required to program a behavior. For example, you may want to program an instance to eat other objects or turn when it reaches the edge of the world. We can define new methods to save time and lines of code. We define new methods or a new method for an action below the act method. We call the new method in the act method or within another method. And we define the method in the superclass if we want its subclasses to automatically inherit the method. Now, we will see all of these in practice as we move along. Defined methods. Define methods or new methods created by the programmer. These methods can be act executed immediately or stored to be called later. They do not change the behavior of the class when they are stored, and they can be used to separate code into shorter methods, making it easier to read. Again, we'll see this as we're using it. Keep in mind, defined methods create a new method that a class did not already possess. These methods are written in the class's source code below the act method. The steps to define a new method are as follows. We first select a name for the method. We open the code editor for the class that will use the method. And then we add the code for the method defined below the act method. We call this new method from the act method, or we store it to use it later. So I'm going to set up, and we will go ahead and work through the slide requirements of creating a B scenario. Um, and we're going to code a handle movement method. As you can see, I currently have a blank project. I'll go ahead and set it up for the B class and subclass. So I have set up my B class or B subclass and you'll see that I've also coded it to match the act method given in the example. What they show is creating our own method called handle movement and move all of the movement code to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and I will first create my handle movement, public handle movement. Notice we're using um, camel case, which is, oops, I forgot my void, so I have my public void handle movement. Camel cases, we start with a lower case letter and then any additional words or uppercase, no spaces. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste this code, clean it up a little. You don't have to get crazy with that. Um, it doesn't always place things well. But now that we have this coded, um, handle movement, this isn't going to do anything because act has no code. But what I can do is I can call handle movement. from the act method, and now it's just like this code were up here. The only difference is it's a little bit cleaner because if now I go ahead and have a whole bunch of other methods that I want to code, I don't have it all in one spot. And if I want to temporarily disable handle movement, I comment out that line and this does nothing. So we'll take a look. We'll see it working. I compiled, no errors. It's beautiful. Um, I'll put my B here and run. And I forgot to make them turn. So there we go. You see them turning. So 
So we've got that set up. Let's take a look. Um, next thing we want to do is take a look at turn at the edge of the wor world. The problem, our instances stop and they're unable to move when they reach the edge of the world. Instances should turn and move when they reach the edge of the world. We want them to turn automatically or um, do something. Um, so our solution is we can create a subclass of actor that defines a method that can detect if the, if the object is at the edge of the world and to turn appropriately. We'll call the new methods in the subclasses that should be able to turn and move at the edge of the world. So in order to do this, we first have to test if something's at the edge of the world. Greenfoot has a method in the actor class called is at edge. Um, is at edge returns true if the actor is at one of the edges. We can use this to detect and then turn actors around rather than have them hover at one of the edges. If our program required to know which edge an actor was at, we would have to either define a method or um, to return the side we were touching. We'll use four separate methods, one for each side. So we're going to see how um, they tell us to do that. Now here you can see I'm in the um, actor class and um, we see is at edge and all it does is detect are we at an edge, yes or no. So here they give us the code. We're going to test the object's position in the world and to test if we're near the edge we require a Boolean expression, right, true or false, to express if a condition is true or false. The example, we can rotate an, in, an instance by 180 degrees if it's at the edge of the world. I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do it once quickly and... Okay, so notice we have the move one in the act and we say if is at edge turn 180. Now, they're going to show the next step a little later, um, but I'm going to go ahead and code something right now. This way you could see it as it came up, um, and then later we'll get to gloss over it. Okay, so let's move to the next slide here. We'll take a look at logic operators. The logic operators can be used to combine multiple Boolean expressions into one expression. Um, logical operators are exclamation mark, which means not. It reverses the value of a Boolean expression. If B is true, not B is false. If B is false, not B is true. We can have a double ampersand, which means and. And what that does is it combines two Boolean values and returns a Boolean value which is true if and only if both of its operands are true. If you've taken geometry, you've probably seen this. Um, if I can borrow my dad's car and I earn $50, then I will go to the movies on the weekend. Well, if I don't own, earn $50, I won't go, or if I can't borrow the car, I won't go. I need both to be true. Now, two lines, um, which are also called pipes, re, are, or, those combine two Boolean variables or expressions and returns a result that is true if either or both of its operands are true. So, maybe... Um, if I have the car, my friend will pay for the movie. And if I don't have the car, I have to pay for my friend to drive the movie. So I might say, if I can borrow the car or I have $50, I will go to the movies. Well, maybe I can't borrow the car. But my friend says, well, if you pay for the gas, I'll drive. So my $50, I made the $50. We get to go to the movies. Possibility exists that I don't have any money, but I can drive, and my friend says, if you drive, we'll go to the movies. So now we can go anyway. If both are true, we still go. 
the only issue we may have is if I don't have money and I can't buy the bar the car and my friend decides he's gonna go with somebody else. Real world example. Let's see where we are over here. Alright, we'll see the example of that code we saw just a moment ago. Um, we're going to create a bug super class. Before creating the defined methods, create a new subclass of the actor class named bug. This scenario has no image and will not have instances that act in the scenario, but it will hold some defined methods that other subclasses will inherit. Fly notice extends actor. Well, I could change that to extend bug, and at that point, fly is now a subclass of bug. And I'm going to do the same thing for spider. Um, make spider a subclass of bug. And I don't really need to compile for a second, close it, and it should auto compile as it did. So now notice these are subclasses. So the next question is going to be why do we do this? And we will take a look. Um, we see we could recreate our spider and fly by clicking on bug and selecting a new subclass or they show us we could um, change where the object is extending from and that will automatically switch for us. So now we want to define a turn it edge method. We're going to do that in the super class. As you see in bug, what we want to do is define public void turn at edge, and then we'll code it. Now, I'll bring that code up so we can see both at the same time. I'm not going to shrink this down, you can actually see it. So what we're going to do is type is if is at edge. And we saw this in the actor class. If is at edge. I'm going to put my close here so I don't forget it. Um, turn 180 degrees. Notice I don't put anything in act because the bug's not going to do anything. The bug has a turn out edge method that it can use. The fly and the spider will inherit that from the bug. So notice I'm going to create a new fly and create a new spider. And um, fly I did not create move, so we're going to add move. So move one. Spider will also tell them to move one. What I'm going to do is create a new fly, create a new spider, and see if we can save it to the world. We can. Didn't work last time, worked this time. We see how it adds over there. Um, we'll close that, run. Nothing. Why well, didn't do anything? Ah, we need to tell it to check if at edge. Um, so what we're going to do is we have move one, and then we'll do tell it to turn at edge. I don't need this code. Um, I'll copy that just as easy probably to retype. Got an extra mark over here. Compile. So I got to the spider. We got this extra code. Compile. Let's run it. There we go. So nice. So I only had to type the code once for the method, and then I could use that method anywhere else. Now the B cannot use that method um, because it is not a subclass. We well, last time the B could probably use it if we say use bug dot turn it edge. I'm not going to try that if you want. You can. 
let's see where we are with the slides. Um, open the code editor for the fly class. Add a call to the method turn it edge in the math method. Um, I didn't have my fly moving at all. I'm going to take a second and add that. So in addition to missing the turn it edge, I believe I had an error in my recording, so hopefully there are no issues and I pick up at the right spot. Um, but as you can see, we add the turn it edge code as shown in the slides, and now we'll go ahead and run this Next to full speed. And notice the spider and fly turn when they get to the edge. My B is still stuck. So we'll go ahead, we'll move along, let's bring this to full screen, and at this point what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the B, when he gets to the right edge, like this, my cursor, gets to the right edge, he'll appear back at the left edge, or if he goes to the left, he'll appear to the right. Some of their instructions are incorrect. Um, so what I'm going to do may not exactly follow the slides, uh, but hopefully you understand well enough that when you look at it, you can figure out what you're supposed to do. Or you can just copy what I do. So let's go ahead. We will, um, we're going to open the code editor into the B class, and we'll write the at right edge method below the act method. Um, so let's do that. So we're in the B, and... Um, just below the act method, we'll come in here, and we're going to code public right edge I'm going to change their minus 20 to minus 6. I will explain why in just a moment. If you forget the return statements, you will get an error. Returns are required. And so let's take a look at this code. So first off, this is a boolean. It's just going to return true and false. It's going to detect if the B is at the right edge. And the way it does that is it gets the X location of the B, and it's saying, is the X greater than the world's width, right? We're getting the world, and we're getting the width of the world. So I believe we define the width as 600. Um, it really doesn't matter because we can pick different numbers. But so say the width of this screen is 600. This says when we get to 600, we'll come 20 back. And if the B is within that margin, then he is considered at the right edge. Um, I want him to need to be a little closer than that. So I'm going to change that to 6. Um, you could try different numbers to see what happens. The next thing we're going to do is pretty much the same thing but for the bottom edge. Um, I'm going to copy the code, and then I'll change what I need. So we'll say at bottom edge, um, if the get y, because these are our y values on that y coordinate, um, if the world's height is within six of the bottom, then we'll go ahead and we'll um, consider them at the edge. So then the next thing we're going to do, um, we'll take a look at these slides. The methods used is at right edge, at bottom edge, and they go explain that get x is getting the actor's x coordinate, the y is getting the y coordinate, the world is returning the world that the actor is in, um, the height is the height of the 
um, world, and then the width is the width of the world. Um, we're going to call these in the class. Um, what I think I'm going to do is create another method rather than leaving this in there. So we'll call it, you can do this in the classes, the slides, or you can do what I'm doing here at edge. And it will handle all of the at edge processes. Um, I forgot my void in here. So otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to say if at right edge, which is the equivalent to it, is at right here. They have some errors, so you need to work with that. If is at right edge, then do something, right? If this is true. So if he's at the right edge, we want to set a new location. Set location. Six. And we're going to make that one the 20. Get Y. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to code the if at bottom edge. Always forget that. Set location. We're going to put get x 20. No errors. So let me explain what's going on here. Um, we've already we've already programmed and explained the at right edge, how we determine it with the right edge. Now we're going to use that. If the B is at the right edge, which is determined by this method over here, if we determine that to be true, we're going to set a new location. Now the X we want to be about 20 in. We don't want him to be so close that later when we program in right, left edge, he gets stuck in the middle, which is what happens if you follow the instructions in the slides. Um, so we'll get him 20 off the edge, and then the Y will keep whatever it was. So if he's up here, it'll stay here. If he's over here, it's going to stay here. Same with the bottom. We will, if we detect that the B is at the bottom edge, we're going to get the X to figure out how far from the edge he is, on the left side, and then keep them there, but keep them 20 off the top. Hopefully that makes sense. Ask if you still don't understand that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the left edge and bottom and top edge, rather than hold you up on me typing those, and then I'll just quickly explain what they're doing. Okay, so you can see we programmed the at top edge and at left edge methods. Um, in this case, if our y is less than 6, we're within 6 of the top, that means we are at the top edge. Or if we're less than 6 away from x, then we're at the left edge. Um, we also need to make calls for those. So those are now in our at edge. We have if at left edge, um, we'll get the world's width minus 20. And then we will, the location will be the width minus 20. So we want the whole width. And then we'll move it 20 in from that width. And then the y will stay the same. Um, at the top edge, we want the height of the world. And once we know that, say it's 600, then we'll come. 20 in from there. If you have any questions, please ask. Now at this point, I need to call at edge from my act method, or it's not going to do anything. So I have that. Um, no errors, so let's see if this works. Run. And notice if my B now hits an edge, 
he goes off the screen and comes back on the other side. Let's go back to our slides. 20 tells us to compile and um, complete top and bottom edge, which we've already done. Um, we can look at the class documentation, um, which is kind of interesting now. If we go ahead, we'll look pretty quickly. If we go to, we can actually do it from here. If we look at our B's documentation, Notice it's been updated with the new methods we've added and shows us how they work. So, Boolean, void, Boolean, Boolean. Let's go back. Collisions. Most game projects will usually have to detect when two actors touch, which is usually called a collision. In Greenfoot, there are multiple ways to detect this. Some of these are the is touching method get one intersecting object method which receives a class as a parameter get one object at offset receives a class as a parameter get intersecting objects class as a parameter get neighbors distance and diagonal and get objects at offset the change in x change in y and the class here we see some explanations for the collisions and when is we use is touching when we simply want to detect a collision with an object. That is the one we're going to use. The other ones they show us get one intersecting object is if we want to perform an action on a collided object or get one object at offset uh, when we want to detect a collision before it actually happens. So it, it hasn't really touched yet. But based on the distance away, we can consider it a collision. So we're going to use a method to remove an object. And they tell us we can write code in our game so a predator object is able to eat prey objects. We can create a defined method in the act method of the B superclass called catch fly that will enable us to remove flies that we catch. To create this defined method, we are going to use the simplest collision detection, which is, is touching. And we see that here. We'll go ahead and we'll code that in. Let's get to our code, and it's going to be in the B method, or in the B class. We'll switch back to the code view. I'm going to put this above, add edge, and call it public void catch fly. So we could use either method. Um, I started doing it this way, so we'll keep doing it that way. And let's code this in. So catch fly, we're going to say if my B is touching a member of the fly class and we'll do something. What are we going to do? We're going to remove touching from the fly class. Next thing we need to do is call that method Let's test this out. So we'll run. And it worked. They show us the alternative to this. Um, we're not going to use that, but we can code private void catch fly 2. And then we can um, use the get one intersecting object method to detect and then remove. This if fly equals null means that if you uh, or the fly not equal to null means if the fly exists then remove it.
fix. So um, we call the catch fly in the act method. Um, that's just adding the reference to call it, which I've already done. Um, so now we'll look at terminology. We've um, defined, we um, added the terms defined methods and collisions. In summary, I um, should have learned how to describe effective placement of methods in a super or subclass. Um, remember, we chose the super class if we want the subclasses to inherit. And then we simplify programming by creating and calling defined methods. And that is all.